Professor Behrens, you will be presenting a study on MRI accessibility for prostate cancer patients. What is the background of the study and what were its objectives? The background of the study is that the EAU new guidelines will include MR imaging in the diagnosis of patients who have a suspicion for prostate cancer. That means that a tsunami of MRIs is coming at us. In the US it's one million patients per year that have an elevated PSA and in Europe it's an equal number. So if we need to perform MRI in all of those patients we need to increase the number by two million. Now how can you do that? It is almost impossible. One way is to speed up the, the MRI examination. So what we did is we tried to delete several components of the imaging technique. We deleted contrast, so you don't have the negative effects of contrast, being allergy and brain deposition of gadolinium, and we deleted a few other planes. So in the end, we ended up with one plane anatomy, anatomy and one plane cell density diffusion. If you calculate the image time, and if you look at how long does it take, you actually have a reduction of 50%. That means that instead of two patients per hour, you can do four. So that's good news. So you can double the capacity of MRI. But if you leave out certain techniques, it may have an effect on the image quality, the image um, accuracy. So we invested, the, they catered the accuracy of the fast technique versus the old technique. What we found, is that we had an equal number of detections of clinically significant prostate cancer. The sensitivity of both techniques was 96%, so no difference. That means that no patients with clinically significant cancer were detected less. The drawback is that the uncertainty of the radiologist increased a little bit, from 6 to 11%. It's not that much. If you look at the um, uh, in insecurity of the general uh, 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 reports of prostate MRI, it is about 20 to 23 percent. So that means that in this expert center study, it still is very low. Also, we needed to do instead of in 51 percent patients a biopsy, 53 percent, so a two percent increase. And finally, instead of 12% in significant cancers, we detected 13%. That means an increase of 1%. If you compare this with trust biopsy, it was 23, so it was still 10% less. So in the end, if you come to a conclusion, we concluded that you can safely use this technique in expert centers. And this will double the capacity of MRI. What will happen to your conclusions now? Um, as this is done in an expert center, it shows really what the MR technique can do. So this needs to be confirmed with multi-center prospective studies all over Europe in non-expert centers. So we need to investigate the generalizability of this technique. If you do such a trial upset, such a trial study in Europe, that also will mean that you are already implementing the technique in those centers. So I think that's the logical next step. Implementation in other centers and carefully monitoring the differences. There's one warning, you need to do a good MRI, the image quality needs to be perfect, otherwise you will have a problem. If you have a non-optimal image and if you leave away the other images, you have the risk that then you will miss clinically significant cancers. But how can you guarantee a good quality image? I think the quality of prostate MRI should be controlled. That the national societies or an international body should check the quality of the MR examination. In the PIRATS classification, which was published in European Urology in 2016, it's clearly described what the demands are for image acquisition. 
and all the centers who are performing prostate MR should fulfill those demands. Also, a general body should check their quality. The quality of images, but also the quality of interpretation and the quality of biopsy. So we have quite a task. Sounds like it. Um, what are issues related to costs? If you look at the direct cost, you see a cost reduction of more than 50%. However, as you detect one patient with an insignificant cancer more, this implies a high burden of cost for the total pathway. So if you do a rough calculation, and we, we would like to write a separate paper on cost effectiveness, but if you do a rough calculation, the fast technique has equal costs to the old technique. So you look from the beginning, patient has a suspicion for prostate cancer, to the end, the patient is treated. So the costs then are equal. That means that with equal costs, we can double the number of examinations. Um, in order to um, establish the generalizability of uh, the new techniques, how important is our networks, your European network? So your question is for the generalizability, how important is network? Network is very important, it's crucial. We have to form a prostate network. And actually, I already started the initiative of creating a so-called EPICON, Excellent Prostate Imaging International Consortium. That means that the expert centers in prostate radiologists are joining forces, are making a network. They have one template for education. They have together one database, anonymized database, from which they can do education, quality control and examination, but also they can create data for artificial intelligence, because that's the next step. If you do a double read with a radiologist, so two radiologists read the same image, it's just like screening breasts, the accuracy is a lot better. And I envision that in the future, artificial intelligence will be the double reader of the radiologist. When I used machine learning, this is something which is before artificial intelligence, that we published a few years ago. When, when I myself are using machine learning, my interpretation accuracy improves. So even an expert can become better. So that's the future. Network forming is crucial. And we should not look about politics. Forget about Brexit. Forget about the, the problems between Eastern Europe, Russia and Europe. Forget about the problems you have with, with, with other countries. We should work together in a unified global prostate network. And what we have been done already is beside Epicon, we have been starting to educate centers. We have educated in the world 20 centers all over the world, Australia, Hong Kong, Europe, US. So this is what I envision that we should do in the future. And radiologists who are caring about their patients should join this network and try to be very, very, very good in prostate MRI. If we do that, we can conquer the tsunami. And I'm sure with a lot of effort, this will and needs to happen. Professor Behrens, thank you very much for this very interesting outlook and summary and plea uh, for the upcoming years. Thank you. Okay, one thing. Um, vielen Dank. Ich werde ein, ein bisschen in Deutsch reden wie Rudi Carell. Äh, wenn Sie dies, das, was Sie gesagt haben, noch mal lesen möchten, es gibt eine Publikation in European Urology von der ersten Studie, Trust Biopsy compared to ähm, MRT. Und eine neue Publikation ist jetzt schon im Press, das ist die Publikation über die schnelle MRT-Technik. Vielen Dank und schönen Tag.